finally getting to paint something a bit different now. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek Deep Thoughts Thin Coats with me, Phil the Glacial Geek. Uh, I'm coming to you again, as always, from uh, the the geek lair here. Uh, and today I'm actually going to be painting up, or starting to paint up, uh, my um, my Knight Valiant, my uh, the Knight Valiant, so the the, the Castellan looking one with the with the flamer and the, and the harpoon. Uh, I actually got it as a Christmas gift for my brother, so finally getting to paint this. I had it like half built on my table for the longest time, and I finally just uh, went together and, and and built the rest of it and primed it. Uh, and I actually primed it for the first time using um, the uh, using the Army Painter uh, color color primers which I'm super excited about. Um, the blue here, this is the crystal blue, came out really well, as did all of the uh, the ones with the, the metal, the plate metal, uh, me, uh, plate metal uh, spray primer, which came out really, really well, is really, really good as well. Um, I'm super excited about it because, uh, you know, they have, their colors are actually mix and match with, or uh, they have paints that match with this. So if I F up like I'm used to, uh, <laughs> I can actually, turn around and, and fix my mistakes, uh, which I'm pretty excited about. So I'm going to start uh, putting on, uh, working on some of these and putting on the, um, I'm going to be using the uh, the lava orange actually to to paint the trim because I think it'll be interesting as like a cool pop uh, for it. I mean, it's a flaming one, so you kind of want it to have like a little, like a rich color like that, which I think would be really cool and work really well with the blue. Um, and I'm using the Game Envy handles uh, again which have been super awesome. I've been very excited about using them, so check them out. Both Iron Painter and Game Envy will be in the description below. Uh, and always, as always, uh, remember, if you want to support the channel, all of it is super appreciative. I've got a Patreon that you can check out, link in the description as well, as well as a merch store with uh, t-shirts, with Glacial Geek t-shirts and gaming t-shirts and things like that uh, that you can check out as well. Uh, if you want to help support the channel, everything helps. Even just a subscribe um, or a like helps the channel. And I really appreciate all of that that you guys have done. You guys are super cool, and I really appreciate everything. Uh, so, yes, so that's what I'm going to be working on hobby wise here uh, with the help of some Army Painter paints. Uh, but I'm also going to be talking about a topic which I think is super, uh, super important, especially for um, people who are either new to the hobby who are or who are new to. Uh, the, the certain aspects of the hobby, uh, and that is how do you improve as a painter? Um, you know, I don't purport to be a professional painter. I don't uh, pretend to be like a golden demon winner or a commission painter. What I am is someone who likes to paint his own models, and I have my own models that I've uh, that I paint, and I like what I do, uh, and I've progressed. I've gotten better as I've gone along. For instance, this was. Uh, one of my first models, as you can see, uh, my wife likes to call it the Melty Cowmen, uh, <laughs> which is where uh, the paints were just slopped on there. Uh, I know I'm, I'm notorious for not doing a whole lot of thinning of my paints, but these were uh, extra, extra thick uh, painted on there. Um, and you can see with the eyes, I have other guys that I've got where the, uh, those, those, those little dots of eyes, uh, big dots of eyes and mouths, uh, when I got too big, I just turned them into sunglasses. Uh, I painted these back when I was a tween when I first started up here. Uh, but my latest, one of my latest models is my Adelan, um, the oh, the Jackal Alphys, uh, which came out pretty well, and I'm super excited with how she came out. Uh, really neat, relatively simple paint job. Uh, used a lot more techniques uh, than that little dude bro did. Um, but honestly. All of this comes down to essentially one thing, and that's actually doing it. So that's the biggest that's the biggest hurdle that a lot of people face is just starting, is actually getting yourself to put some paint onto a model, and in so doing, starting the whole process of hobbying and 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 model painting. Um, that's the biggest hurdle that keeps people uh, from trying because they don't think they're good enough. They don't think that they're uh, that they're going to ruin models. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're, you're not going to ruin something that at this point is just bare plastic because it's no matter w how good you do or what you do with it, uh, at the end of the day, any kind of paint on a model, 
is going to look better than gray plastic. And I know some of you maybe think it's like, well, you've never seen my paint job. I've seen some crazy paint jobs, you know. I've seen I've seen the Melty Cowboy, and this Melty Cowman looks better to me than uh, the bare plastic model would have looked because there's paint on it, and it's it's got some character, it's got some looks. It's not going to win me any painting awards, um, but what it is going to do is it looks different and it looks cool, and it's got my character, you know, and it's my model that I painted, and I'm I'm happy with that. And that's the first step that you need to overcome to becoming a better painter is actually just painting. I know it sounds stupid that you can't be a better painter if you don't paint, but there's a lot of people out there who don't think they're a good painter and therefore stop themselves from painting. And in so doing, they keep themselves from ever becoming a better painter uh, or ever becoming the kind of painter that they, that they would allow to paint their models. And you're never going to get that good if you don't paint, you know? So the first step you need to do is just go out there and actually get some paints uh, that you can paint your models with. So just go and get like one of the starter kits. So Army Painter has a starter kit. Um, or you could just get whatever kind of paints that you want. Just get some basic colors. You don't need a thousand million colors. You know, before, I know I've talked about this, but before I, uh, I the Army Painter helped to sponsor this and sponsor me and, and provided me with their line of paints, I had a very minimal range of colors that I worked with. Um, I didn't have the whole range of anybody and those colors that I worked with were the ones that I painted my army. So I had my Dark Angels, so they were green, you know, and I had a, I had a red that I would work with. Um, and that's basically what I had and that's what I started with and that's what I went with. Um, I didn't have every single color, every single green, every single red, every single orange or yellow or, or different various shades of whites. I had the basic colors uh, that I worked with and I started with and I got better at using those colors. Um, so, you know, you don't need to go out and buy, you know, the ultra mega bundle of every single paint out there as much as I'm sure they would love you to. You don't need to, especially when you're first starting out, you just need basic paints um, that will paint your army. Uh, so figure out what you're going to do. So if you have an orc army that you want to try to start painting, make sure you have a green because you want to have on there, you know, you want to be able to paint their skin. You know, make sure you have a black, make sure you have a metal color. It doesn't matter which one. There's like a thousand different types of metal. Just choose one that you like uh, and go with it because those first models that you paint are not going to win you awards. Uh, but what they will do is they will start you down the process to figure out how to do any kind of painting. So, like I said, you start off with that first model that you paint, and it's going to be it's going to be what it is. You know what I mean? Uh, if you're a little bit you know meticulous about it and you take your time, it could look decent. You know, it's not going to be like I said, award winning, and it's not going to be the kind of thing that you eventually want to be able to paint like. But what it will be is it will be the first model that you painted and it will have paint on it and it will look better than a bare plastic model would. So take that first step is the first step in becoming a better painter is actually painting. Uh, once you start painting, that's when you can start to focus on getting better. Uh, and the best way to get better is to be aware of what other people are doing. You know, don't compare your paint jobs to, you know, crystal brush or golden demon winning painters. Don't compare your stuff to the showcase models that, that, um, you know that the, the commission painters put up on their Instagram or up on their uh, up on their Facebook page. But what you want to do is you want to see what's going on and see the the realm of possibilities of what model painting can do. Because once you have an idea of what the realm of possibilities are, you can then proceed from there into becoming able to do that. Um, so, like I said, the first time you paint, you're not going to be doing non-metal metallics. You're not going to be doing wet blending. You're not going to be doing, you know, object source lighting OSL. But what you're going to do is progressively as you start to learn, you can see what's out there and you can start to understand what it is that you're going to try to do. So, like I said, that's the first step is just beginning and just starting. And once you start, once you actually start to put some paint onto models, what you can do from there is just practice. If you paint more and more models, you will get better. And that's what has come down to me. I've watched a few videos on specific techniques that I wanted to look to do. Uh, I've looked at certain videos to understand different ways of, of painting. But at the end of the day, the, reason, the way I went from this to this was through just painting a ton of models. Just painting a ton of models and really 
understanding what it is that I wanted to achieve by painting them. So at a certain point, I understood that what I wanted was a painted army. I, you know, I, it worked with, it ended up being a lot because of the channel that I couldn't play with gray plastic models and have them on my channel. So if I wanted to play with my brand new toys, I had to learn how to paint them and relatively fast, but make them look good so that it's not just a, a sloppy job. That's just, you know, whatever, it's paint on it. That may be okay, but I wanted to hold myself to a higher standard when I was, when I was painting them. So what I started to do was learn techniques and learn a process to make myself faster and better at the same time. Um, and, a pro and, a, and, and something to focus on when you're doing this is to start to become neater and neater. So for instance, when I first started, I would just slap on some paint and then, you know, the, they would just overlap and it would, it would bleed over as you saw in that where that's like the shoulder, the shoulder straps for his backpack kind of bleed into his, um, bleed into his uniform. And then from there, it just kind of goes downhill. Um, I didn't do any kind of cleaning up. So the first step that I learned was how to clean up. So I would go back and I would have a base coat that I would that would paint everything in. Um, so for instance, with my dark angels, I would paint everything just that, you know, the angels green, the, the, the dark angel looking green. And then I would go in and paint all the details. And then I would go back with my green and paint back over where my detail colors spilled onto the armor. Um, until I had a relatively neat model, you know, and just having a, a neat looking, neat model where the colors are where they're supposed to be so that his shirt color isn't on his backpack and his backpack color isn't on his weapon. Um, all of those make the model look better. Just having a clean looking model makes it look better for the simple fact that in real life, our, our, sh our backpack straps aren't going to bleed into our shirts. They're very distinct. So the second you have a model that has very distinct color regions like that, uh, it's going to look more realistic because you don't have that kind of bleeding happening in real life because they're actual physical different objects um, that you're painting on there. You know, so on here, they're all the same model and they all come to you as that same gray plastic. But in reality, they're different parts on in you know on the model so their gun is a separate object from the per the mo the soldier and the backpack is a separate object from both of those uh so learning to become neat with your paint job uh really helps with both the speed and it also because you don't have to go back and clean up as much uh but it also helps it to get better um with the with the paint job that you're going with there so like i said if you start to paint them um, neater, they're going to look better. And you also don't have to spend as much time going back and cleaning it up, but learning to go back and clean it up is the first step to painting neater because it suddenly you realize I'm spending all this time cleaning up these mistakes that I made that I could have helped by just taking the extra time to make sure I went in with a smaller brush to make sure I didn't go into the, into the face area with, with the headband, or I didn't go into the gun by painting the hands. All of these things can be cleaned up in the end, and I think that is an important lesson to learn, and it's an important thing to do, is once you learned how to put paint onto a model, which is, it sounds easy, but it's that first step is a huge one. Once you're putting paint onto the model, the next thing you can do to improve yourself is to clean up your paint jobs. So go back, touch up mistakes that you made, touch up places where uh, the colors got where you didn't want them to be, and from there, you then now have a nice, neat painted model. Um, and that, like I said, that process can be improved by through time and practice where you just, you start to not have to go back as much because you take your time the first time when you paint it to keep the colors where you want them to. Um, and you don't, um, put yourself in a position where you have to clean up as much. Uh, and once you become better at that, then it becomes even faster, you know? So first it becomes the process, then how to improve it and then how to make it faster. And that's how you make yourself into a hobbyist, how to make yourself into a, a hobby painter is by going through and learning a skill, getting better at a skill, and then getting faster at that better skill um, as you progress. So those are the three steps that you're going to take with every single thing that you do uh, when it comes to painting is to do it, to then um, to do it, to then get better at it, and then to get faster at it. So first thing you do is paint the model. Next thing you do is make it neater. 
then you get faster at making it neater till you kind of get that down. Once you have that basic uh, kind of structure down, once you have that basic kind of uh, painting down, um, you can then start to move into other areas. So suddenly you look at your paint job and you're like, it just looks super, super flat and boring and I hate it. You know, I get that way with basically every single model that I paint. I paint it and I'm like, this is garbage. I'm going to melt it all down. And I'm just going to become, I don't know, maybe like a, a fantasy football guy instead of this. And, you know, that's where I end up with every single model that I paint. I hate it at certain, at, at some point during the painting process, I hate that model and I wish that I wasn't doing it. The reason is, is because it doesn't look like what I want it to look like. And that's a huge step that stops people, you know? So look at the model, make sure, and understand that a painted model to anybody is going to look better than a bare plastic model. So even if your paint job is not what you want it to be, it's still better and people are going to want to see it more than they would a bare plastic model. Because a bare plastic model is, you know, whatever. But if it's a painted model, they can see it and they like it and it, it, it gives something. It gives a bit of character, it gives something a little bit of extra. So first step is to start putting paint on the model, then to get neater with that paint job. Once you have a, a process down where you've got a relatively neat paint job on your models, then you can start putting into other uh, different painting effects and different ways. So there's a reason that they call washes like liquid talent is because they really do go that extra mile in making your model then pop because what it does is it emphasizes all the different details in the model as long as you paint it well as long as you painted it neatly it'll start to emphasize that so the first thing I would do is have a basic model that doesn't require a whole lot of different variations so like a space marine or a sig marine or or even like a tear in it or something like that and you what you do is you give your basic base paint job so you do like I said, keep it neat, keep everything where it's supposed to be, and now you have a painted model. The next thing you wanna do is start to learn how to do washes, because what washes will help it pop out. The first thing that you can do to learn how to do washes is just freaking douse the thing in the wash. So then you can start to learn how washes work. So the first model that you have there, you've just got it totally just wash it out, wash it with the color, uh, with the with the with the with the wash. Army Painter has a whole different kind of line of it. There's a whole bunch of other ones that you can get. Just get a color that you think will complement it. So, for instance, if you want to go for a, like a dingier kind of look, a black kind of wash is going to help you and it's going to be very beneficial to giving you that. And it's going to look a bit dingier. It's going to look darker and it's really going to bring it down. Um, and it works, in my opinion, very well for the grim dark future uh, for that kind of look. And from there, you will now have a model that will have dimension. And dimension is exactly what every single paint tutorial or style or method is aiming to do is to bring dimension to these models because at the end of the day they are just a piece of plastic and they have a sense of dimension to them but the paint job is going to require something else to it too because uh, on a small scale like this sometimes light doesn't really affect it the same way that it would a full scale model so the paint jobs usually try to take in that effect. So the washes now will pop out the details that kind of get washed out by having this flat paint all across an entire section of it. So once you learn how to do the washes, you now have a model that is not great plastic, that has uh, that has paint on it, that is neatly painted because you've worked on that process, and now has dimension because of these washes. And from there, you can start to figure out how you want washes. A lot of people like to just put it into the recesses, into the cracks. Other people like to have different types of washes for different sections. So for instance, maybe you use a different wash for the skin tone than you do for the armor, um, or maybe you do a different wash for the weapons. Uh, you could go all the way down to where you're using different paint, uh, different types of washes for different types of parts on the model. So maybe the gold parts on your model, you might use like a brown wash or like a, like a sepia kind of wash, or maybe, you know, with, with the, you know, with with the white portions, you might use like a blue wash so that you can then go back and, and bring back up that white. Uh, it works really well with wings. I've found is that you, you know, you have your white paint, then you do a blue wash, and then you go back over with white, which is the next step that you can get to. But the first thing you need to do is learn, to learn how to use these washes to bring dimension to a model. You know, with Space Marines especially, and those kind of uh, more simpler uh, designed uh, models, I've found one color of wash that just washes over the whole thing 
really makes it pop and really helps to bring dimension to a model. Um, and from there, that's that's perfect. That's exactly what you're looking for. And now you have a model that has dimension, that has paint on it, and it's very simple to get to those first steps. So those first few learning curves is super. It's it's super steep, not on the uh, difficulty, but on how quickly your skills develop. You can go from bare plastic to a very good tabletop standard for, for in, in, in like that, it's super quick after just a, a few months of really just getting yourself to paint, to go from learning how to put paint onto a plastic to how to start to develop uh, some kind of dimension to it. And a lot of people are okay with that. Honestly, a lot of what I do basically stops at that. I do a neat paint job and then I go in with a wash and I make it look decent. And I've learned how to manipulate the washes, how to work with the washes to get the kind of effect that I want and to make it look a certain way. And it works really well for getting my models fastly painted and onto the tabletop. From there, you can learn different things. Like I said, I've got some models that I painted, like the wings on the models where I had, I would go back in and paint back the base color over top of the washed area so that it brings back that, that original color. And that's something that you can do or you can work with just the color of the, the model as it is. Either which is completely legitimate and, and a good way to go, depending upon what you want. If you really want to improve from there, if you want to eventually be uh, competing for the Golden Demon or, or Crystal Brush, or you want to be the inspiration for someone else that paints, then yeah, there are a lot of other methods, non-metallic metal, metals, object source lighting, uh, you know, wet blending, all of these things that you can go in and start doing that are above and beyond the basics that I'm talking about here. But honestly, uh, every single person that you see out there that's done that started somewhere. And they all started with that first model that they painted. Everyone has a first model that they painted. You know, some are better than others because of whatever time they took or whatever instruction they had. But none of them are wonderful, great looking models, those first ones. Because it takes some time to learn how to do this and how to operate a brush. You know, I know it sounds stupid. I know it sounds like it's, it's a basic idea. But it takes a lot to learn how to operate a brush. How to get the paint from that brush onto the model where you want it to be. You know, I had the benefit of, of learning from my wife, uh, who is a, a an artist. She is, you know, a painting professor. And she taught me all of, she taught me how to actually, you know, how to use the brushes. She taught me all about color theory, which is another thing that you can use to improve your models so that the color scheme that you develop for your army uh, actually works well with it, with itself. There's a lot of videos out there you can take a look. Um, you can also follow my wife on Instagram, see how her paintings go. You can see the kind of work that she does, which is very different than what I do. But you can check her out. She's on Instagram at Honor Bowman Hall. And uh, check her out, you know, send her a message, say the Glacial Geek Center sent you. <laughs> I'm sure she'll appreciate those comments on her, on, her, on her pictures. And you can see the paintings, the kind of work that she does. Um, but she teaches classes in color theory. And these are the kind of things that if you want to become better at it, you need to start learning. So you have to learn that, you know, how complementary colors work, how tertiary colors work, how to develop a color scheme for your army that will look good. Because once you develop that color scheme, you can then expand from there and provide other details. So for instance, like with my Dark Angels, I have the green of the armor and I work with red bolters. And, you know, a lot of people are like, well, why are you gonna have red bolters? And it's like, yeah, if I was actually going to war, I wouldn't have a bright red weapon. But in you know, my model, it looks really good because red and green complement each other very well. So it really pops and they work well and they make a cohesive look to them. Uh, the Glacial Geek logo and coloring for the Glacial Geek logo or what I'm doing uh, with, with, with my knights here is the blue and the orange and they work well together, they're complementary colors. So finding those kind of schemes, those paint schemes are important because they will make your models and your armies look better. And once you have that paint scheme, you can work with that and have that work through all the different, the different way, the different models that you paint. And they can be different, as but they all have these ba the same kind of color palette that they're working with. Uh, so, for instance, like with my Gene Stealer Cult, as you may have seen, I've got the the I've got that like that sea foamy green. Uh, I've been using the uh, the Elemental Bolt um, 
paint from Army Painter. Uh, I've got like the blue of the skin. I've got the lighter blue that I use to highlight. I've also got a darker blue that I work to to put in with splashes of different color. Uh, then I go and I've got you know the the armor as the the gray that I use. And then from there, I go into the vehicles, which might have some of that, that same blue, sea foam bluey green. Uh, I also have like a darker blue that I use, a uh, deep blue um, that I use. I, can, I also have like with my brood brothers with their uniforms that they're doing, I'm now using with like a deep blue uh, for them. And they've got a white shoulder pad, all these different things that develop from the same cohesive color palette makes my army look cohesive, look like one type of, of thing going forward. And that makes a big deal, you know? It, it really, really brings out um, how an army looks. And that's another easy method that you can use to make be to make an army that will look better fully painted. Is that if all of your models follow the same kind of color scheme, they're gonna look better together and they're gonna look like they're a cohesive force, a cohesive unit going forward. And that's something that's that, that, that pretty much anyone can do. You know, you can just go online and find a color scheme and work with it. And it doesn't have to be a color scheme that's going to tell you, you know, like paint by numbers on the specific models you're painting. Just go on to any kind of color theory website or any kind of color theory, um, you know, Instagram or Facebook or anything like that. And you can take it out, check it out, and look at them, and just see how they all how they work with it. So take a look at my wife's paintings, and 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 you can see how she works with colors that help to complement each other or um, pop with each other, and 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 help to emphasize different things. So if you have that kind of color scheme going into it, your basic painting skills, like I said, putting first putting paint on plastic, then being neat with your paint on plastic, and then going forward with. Um, you know, washes and then highlights. So you can use dry brushing, you can use edge highlighting, all of these different methods that will come to you that you can research and look to go forward, but don't need to be used in your very first models. Um, but the color scheme can be something that you can go into because it's not a skill that you, it's, it's a skill that you can kind of cheat at in the beginning because you can use the information that other people have and you don't have to physically learn how to make your hands do it. You can just go onto these these different places, find a color scheme that works, get the paints that match those colors, and suddenly now the, that's the palette that you're going to be painting your models with and just paint them. So then, like I said, you just start putting those paints onto the plastic models, then you neatly get those paints onto the plastic models, and then you go from there. Uh, to push it forward. So like for instance, when I first started doing black armor on my chaplains in my Dark Angels army, I just painted black and then I used a gray edge highlighting and it never looked good to me. It always looked like, it, it looked fine, it was whatever, but I really wanted it to look better. Um, so it they looked better than gray plastic, but I knew I wanted to go better. So I started to look around and find different methods and I found a method online that I, I wish I had saved the link I know what I do with it, but um, you know how to how to do it now. But I can't find the link to to you know to broadcast to the the original person that used to do it. But essentially, what you do is you have your prime black, your base black, and then you do a heavy dry brush with um, with like a light gray, a uh, light a light gray, and then you do a heavy dry brush with like a blue gray, so like a space wolves kind of gray, and you have that kind of that dry the bluey gray, and you have a model now that looks very gray. It's got the black base, but it's got this heavy dry brush of all these colors that are picking out all the edges because that's what dry brushing does. Um, but then you bring it down with the washes. So you'd use a black wash to bring it down and you would use like two layers of this black wash that would bring it almost back down to uh, the base black, but it suddenly had dimension. It was black with dimension, which was mind-blowing to me. So it was an actual black. It actually ended up being like a dark gray, but it had these blue undertones because of the blue gray that I used. Um, and it would, But it would look black with dimension, which is awesome. So now I'm very happy with how my Death Watch models look compared to my old Chaplains because of that process that I used to paint the models. Um, and that's what it comes down to. You know, like the first model that you paint shouldn't be like a $500 model from Forge World. You know, it should be a basic marine that you can get from a GW store for free. It should be a basic, you know, even if you want to start with some of the basic plastic models that you can get. I know that um, like WizKids has the the pre-primered 
uh, models that you can get from a game store. You can just buy, you can get a game piece from a, a board game that you have on the shelf. Anything, just that first model that you take and you actually put paint onto it. Um, it can be a model that you're gonna see later on, that you're gonna see, like I said, my, my Melty Cowboys sit on top of my, 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 my computer up on here as I, you know, for, for to, to remind me of what I'm looking at, you know, of where I've come. And you're gonna see this model again, you'll play with it again, uh, but it shouldn't be a super expensive model that is gonna add nerves to what you're doing. You know, a free model is, is, is perfect because, you know, at the end of the day, if you really don't like how it looks, you don't have to look at it anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, you could just not deal with it anymore. Uh, but I think that even using those basic, uh, the, those basic things, like I've said, you're going to start to be happy with it. And then from there, you just have to paint the dickens out of models. Just keep painting. The reason I've increased my skill, even in the short, even over the last couple of years, the reason I've gotten so much better at it is because I've painted so many models. And the more and more you paint, the better and better you're going to get. So even now, I look at this new painting model, and I'm like, oh, that looks great. And I look at some of my older models, and I'm like, Egh. And, you know, they don't look as great, but, you know, I still use a lot of them, you know, especially with my Dark Angels. Those were the first ones when I really got back into it that I started painting that were, they're okay, you know. I, 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 I was more, uh, I was cleaner with my paint jobs than my Melty Cow Bros, uh, but I wasn't quite as clean as I am now with, with you know, my Gene Stealer Cult stuff that I've been painting. Uh, and it didn't use as a lot, a lot of the techniques. Um, but what I did was I just kept getting better and better and I would do more and more so I would start to add in highlights where I wanted to maybe certain effects that I wanted to I tried a little bit of object source lighting in certain models I tried a little edge highlighting and vehicles especially because it really helps them to pop um, I used dry brushing I you know there's all these different methods that you can find out online uh, how to do uh, but know that your first models don't have to be that way um, if you start using a different technique, you can always get better at it. Like I'm much better at handling how washes work on my models now than I used to be. Uh, just from use, just from trying and trial and error and actually just doing it. So they've, I've just gotten a lot better at doing that. And that's what it comes down to is just doing it. Actually painting the models is the best way to get better at painting models. I know it sounds circuitous, it sounds circular there where it's like you can't be better at painting if, unless you paint. But that's the truth. And a lot of people hold themselves back from getting better because they don't paint. Or they just paint a few models and then they kind of give up because it's not they're, all, they're not winning awards already. If you keep painting, I guarantee you, you will get better. It's just the simple fact. You know, they talk about the, the 10,000 hours uh, that if you practice anything for 10,000 hours, you will become an expert in it. And painting is, uh, painting especially on hobby level like this with the models and everything like that, it's it's super true. The more time you put into it, the more effort you put into it, the better you're going to get. And you can keep pushing yourself from there. And that's what it takes is pushing yourself. So the first push you need to make is to actually paint a model. The next push you need to make is to become cleaner with your paint job. The next push you need to make is using other types of painting techniques like washes and highlights. And from there, you just keep pushing yourself more and more until eventually you look at your model and you go, oh, dang. Like that looks real good, <laughs> you know. I've suddenly realized it more so recently, especially since the Gene Stealer Cult, um, when they've come back and I've been painting a lot of Gene Stealer Cult. As I've been painting these models, I found myself at the end of them going, "Oh dang! Like that looks pretty good." I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm really happy with that. Um, and I've started putting them on my Instagram, you know, at Glitch Geek if you want to check it out. Uh, <laughs> and I've been painting them, putting the models up there, and I've I've been very happy with how they've been coming out, and I've been super excited about the type of paint jobs that I've been doing and, and the different work that I've been doing on it. And it's only come because I've been doing it over and over and over again and pushing myself to paint more and more. Uh, it becomes important to do that if you want to improve. And if you want to become a better painter, that's how you do it, is push yourself. So push yourself to actually start painting. Push yourself to be a cleaner painter. And to be honest, becoming a cleaner painter does take effort because it's a lot easier to just like slap it on or ignore the drip that went down or ignore that one you know errant brush stroke that put you know green armor paint onto his gun or whatever it is it's a lot easier to ignore those mistakes than to go back and fix them and to learn how to not make those mistakes it's a lot easier to just make them and kind of slap it on and just be 
you know, whatever with it, you know, but you're not going to get better unless you try to force yourself to do those different things. So pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone is super helpful in growing your skills in painting. So like I said, if you're not comfortable painting, just painting is pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. So, you know, if you're not comfortable taking the time and effort to keep it clean then pushing yourself to do so is pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. So like I said, you don't have to go in your first model doesn't have to be this non-metallic metal, you know, object source lit, you know, monstrosity that will try to be winning you an award. The first model should just be a piece of plastic with paint on it. And once you've done that, you can go, "All right, I want to do better." And if you want to do better, you can then proceed to get better. And all of that is is super helpful until eventually you've got you know, the whole range of, of paints and you've got the whole range of different techniques that you can use and you can expand to other things like playing around with basing, with different kinds of materials that you can use. Uh, you can go into kit bashing, all these different avenues you can take, but none of that is possible unless you take that first step of actually putting paint onto a model. So that is the single, the single most important step in becoming a better painter is actually painting. So actually painting is the single most important step to becoming a better painter. And once you've done that, everything else is gradual and, pro and progressive. You know, you're eventually gonna get to a point where you're gonna hit kind of a plateau. Cause like I said, those first few steps really amp up, really ramp up your, your, your painting ability. So learning how to work with paints, how to control the paint, how not to like fill in details with the paint, how to not slop it on, how to keep it neat, how to learn how to use washes, how to do highlighting, all of that is really going to ramp up your skill level really quick until you get to a really decent looking uh, tabletop standard. From there, it becomes a lot harder to to master a lot of the more advanced techniques. So advancing, mastering, you know, um, uh, wet blending or, or object source lighting or non-metallic metals. All of these take a lot of skill to develop, and then learning how to to control the paints even more. Uh, like with glazing or anything like that. These are all advanced techniques that can really push your models to like the nth degree, but all of that comes with practice. And it takes a lot more practice to go from, you know, nine to 10 than it does to go from one to two. So paint. And honestly, even at that level, the way you go from nine to 10 is by painting and trying and practicing over and over and over again until it finally clicks, until it finally works, until you finally have an object that's exactly what you want it to be. And by the time that you have an ob a painting object that's exactly what you wanted it to be, you now want it to be something else that's inevitably, inevitably gonna happen. But you know, you can go back and you can dunk every single model that you have back into you know the simple green and strip the paint off of everything. But honestly, I like to just, once I finish painting a model, I'm done painting it. I'm not gonna go back and paint it again. I'm not gonna go back and fix it. It looks good, it, it'll do the job because a painted model is always gonna look like a painted model and the next models that I paint can be better and just utilize those ones and that's how it works. So just take those first steps and take step after step after step after step until you eventually get to a place where other people are like, dang y'all, your stuff looks good. That's what it takes. So. Uh, like I said, I'm not a professional painter. I'm not out here, you know, promoting my, 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 um, you know, my commission painting. But what it goes to show you is that even me, who's a hobbyist painter, I can grow and I can get better. And if I can do it, then you can too. That's what it comes down to. So just take the effort, put in the effort and make it happen. So let me know what your guys' tricks are to becoming a better painter. Talk to me about your, um, talk to me about your process and how you've progressed um, to go further and further. And, uh, you know, and, and maybe if we all talk to each other about how we've grown and where we've started, we can really start to understand, you know, the, the abilities that we all have to become better and to do better with the hobby aspect of this game, you know? And, and Army Painter also has their own process that they use to help you just get a painted army if you just want it, which is like they have the color primer that you prime, you do your paint job, and then they have a dip, like a sh quick shade that they use, um, and then you're done. And it looks good for tabletop, and it's, it's meant to be to help people like quickly paint models to throw out there for a tournament. Um, but 
again, what that goes to show you is that they have this process that people are using. It's because a painted model always looks better than bare plastic. And if that process is not what you want to do, if you want to go in and actually paint every one of your models, do it. But don't say you don't want to do that process and still walk around with your gray plastic models because you're afraid to paint. Actually paint it. Go out there and paint because painted models do look better. And they're more fun to play with. I'm not going to lie. I feel more engaged in my games with my painted models than I do uh, on the off games that I play with unpainted models because it's just more fun to actually have a fully painted model that you're moving around the table. It's in more immersive and it really gets you into it. Even if you're in a competitive situation where you're gaming to win, you can still be immersive with your fully painted army. So, like I said, keep this conversation going down below. Let me know what you think. And thank you guys all again for all the support that you've that you've given me throughout the the tenure of this channel and it's going to keep growing and I'm really excited about going forward in the future and all of the support that you can give uh, like I said, whether it's a like, a subscribe, or, or actually supporting on Patreon or buying a t-shirt, all of it really helps and really I'm thankful for every single bit of it. So thank you guys all again. I have been Phil the Glacial Geek as always. And until next time, have fun.